We just got some jaw-dropping Tesla news. Reuters just reported that Tesla has cancelled its low-cost car plans to focus on developing self-driving robotaxis on the same platform. Elon's directive is to go all in on robotaxi, Reuters source said. Sawyer doesn't know if this is true though. Now this could be quite bearish or quite bullish. Personally I am a bit more conservative so for me this is uh... Why couldn't we just do both is my question. Minutes ago Elon actually just responded to this story. Reuters is lying again. Oof. Now, sometimes there are bits of truth in what Reuters reports, even when Elon says that it's not a true report. For example, Reuters said that Tesla was planning to export vehicles from China to the US. Tesla didn't do that, but Tesla did export vehicles to Canada. And then the most embarrassing part for Reuters was they changed the headline and they made it look like the headline was about North America, not the US specifically. But initially the headline was about the US. So that's shame on Reuters. But there was a bit of truth in that report. So let's see. Tesla scraps low cost car plants amid fierce Chinese EV competition. Entry level Tesla car won't be built, resources tell Reuters. Tesla to focus on self driving taxis instead. This news is based on also reviewing some of the Tesla's messages and the robot taxis would be built on the same small vehicle platform. In other words, let's assume for a moment this is true. If FSD is not solved within, let's say, the next 12 months or so, all Tesla probably needs to do is just add pedals and a steering wheel to that vehicle and done. Tesla did not respond to requests for comment. This is one of the few cases where I can very strongly get behind Tesla having a PR department because this kind of news affects not just traders, but also long-term investors. I mean, if Tesla actually completely abandons the next generation vehicle, that's not an autonomous vehicle. I would not be happy. And I know some long investors that hold Tesla not because they believe in FSD, but because they believe in the next generation vehicle. And some of these people would certainly sell Tesla stock based on this news. I personally wouldn't because my model predicts that FSD will be sold. But as an investor who has his whole portfolio, stock portfolio invested in Tesla stock, I do like backup plans in this case. Tesla having a backup plan is sort of me being diversified. If you are new to this channel, I also have real estate and I own multiple private businesses. And I generally tell people don't put more money into Tesla stock than what you are willing to lose. The third source confirmed the cancellation and said new plans call for robotaxis to be produced but in much lower volumes than had been projected for the Model 2. Several company messages reviewed by Reuters about the decision included one on March 1st from an unnamed program manager for the affordable car discussing the project's demise with engineering staff and advising them to hold off on telling suppliers about program cancellation. A fourth person with knowledge of Tesla's plans expressed optimism about the decision to pivot away from the cheap car strategy in favor of robotaxis. A segment must has envisioned as the feature of mobility. The source cautioned that Tesla's product plans could change again based on economic conditions. Tesla called the affordable car project NV91 internally and H422 externally when discussing it with suppliers, according to two other sources. Messages from the unnamed Tesla program manager to staffers referenced those code names in discussing the project's termination. One of those messages sent March 1st said, that suppliers should halt all further activities related to these two code names. The sources said they did not know all the reasons behind the decision to kill the project. In another March 1st message, the manager thanked engineering staffers for their efforts and urged them to document what they had learned. I'd like to thank everyone for all of your hard work and education to pushing boundaries and executing the best design possible given the aggressive constraints we had to work within. The message said, we would not want all our hard work to go to waste. So it's important that we tie things off and document things properly, whatever that means. The messages showed meetings on the affordable car project being canceled. The two sources said some engineers have been reassigned. These are very detailed observations from Reuters. Is, is this really all a lie? There's sounds to me like there's something 
happening. But based on what Elon Musk just said, clearly the project is not cancelled. I personally assume that there are bits and pieces that are likely true in what Reuters covered here, just like they were sort of right, but not really nowhere near to an extent that they should have been about exports from China to the US. So I expect some sort of change about the next generation vehicle. There's something that's going on here. Here's the Tesla stock chart today. This is when Elon says Reuters is lying. I think SEC should probably look into that article and see if anyone was behind this and if anyone was shorting Tesla stock because if someone did they made a lot of money just now. This is a very important subject to all of us Tesla stock investors so I want to spend more time here. Sora says Elon just said Reuters was lie. However, here's my general thinking. Tesla's low cost $25,000 car and the robot taxi were always going to be based on the same platform. They were going to be very similar but the $25,000 version was going to have a steering wheel. Maybe Elon and the team have been so impressed with how good FSD 12 has performed and were maybe thinking they should be shifting even more resources to their robotaxi slash FSD effort. This does not mean the $25,000 car is cancelled. Again, they share the same platform. Me Kevin says possibly, but what you have just done is delay the Model 2 until FSD is 100% that likely kills 2026 production and delivery forecasts on Wall Street. Or the $25,000 car is far long enough that they can afford to shift some more resources to the robot taxi slash FSD effort. This doesn't necessarily mean anything is delayed. All we ask for is simple clarity from Elon. Why did the rumor start? Who started it? Is it a misunderstanding? What's going on? Elon should provide clarity right now. He's more focused on responding to Biden issues and Ben Shapiro. Elon actually responded to Sawyer's original post with these two eyes. And yeah, I think we will take it as confirmation that the vehicle is not canceled, is on the same platform, and that FSD is going well and some resources have been shifted to build FSD and robotaxis a bit faster. Gary Black commented on the story. Elon appears to be denying the Reuters story that Tesla is killing the $25,000 compact in favor of self-driving robotaxis. If the story was true, no $25,000 EV and doubling down on autonomy would be very risky and institutions would down the stock since there would be little growth and high pricing risk until the robotaxi materialized or not. Ooh, Reuters even pointed out that Tesla shares fell nearly 5% after the Reuters report. They they even brag about it. Even Farzad is calling for SEC to investigate Reuters. I missed two posts from James. He already deleted those. But he says, I still think the article is credible in spirit. The Reuters article. Farzad though says, splitting hairs, that $25,000 car is coming and it will be able to drive itself. So what if it's one to two years late? Who else is remotely close to making an affordable EV at profit at scale that can drive itself? Cancel Model 2 is very reminiscent of the 2017-2018 period where everyone was calling for Tesla's demise during the Model 3 ramp. Amazing how often history repeats itself. In my opinion, this false article is proof Tesla is cooking something delicious as Farzad. For the first time, we can recall investors are starting to put increased odds of FSD licensing deals as a major contributor to Tesla's valuation. Morgan Stanley's Jonas now attributes just $62 per share of his $310 Tesla stock price target to the core auto business while attributing $104 per share to third-party licensing deals. While we believe Jonas' assumptions for FSD licensing are far too aggressive, the spotlight on FSDs significant progress toward full autonomy and Elon continuously talking about the potential of FSD licensing deals is becoming a bullish catalyst for Tesla stock. After that Reuters article, Elon Musk published this Reuters website is not doing very well month over month down 17% in terms of its traffic year over year, minus 9%. Well, today with that Tesla stock story, they definitely got some traffic. I wasn't going to share this publicly, but since people are wondering why I have such high conviction in the Reuters article, here's what I received from someone just yesterday, note before the Reuters article and the person's response today after reading it. For better or worse, likely worse, engineers that were focused on the $25,000 car as priority number one have been shifted to robotaxi as priority number one. This is as of a couple 
weeks ago and James replied with probably longer than two weeks, not more than a month ago from a significant other at the company. If nothing else, the waffling on the $25,000 car very much persists. And here's what the source said about the Reuters article. While not entirely accurate, I do believe there is merit behind the Reuters article. Here's my whole conclusion from this. Tesla is obviously working on a robot taxi and it is working on the next generation vehicle that anyone will be able to drive without FSD but the priority is on the robot taxi, which is bullish for FSD because this shows high conviction that the Tesla team has in this new approach for FSD. I don't think the next generation vehicle without FSD is abandoned. I really don't think so. But it does seem like some of the best engineers have been asked to focus specifically on the robot taxi features of that vehicle and not on the features of the regular car. So Tesla is basically doing exactly what I want. Build both a robot taxi and a regular car at the same time on the same platform. Here's some good news. 500 Cybertrucks have been spotted at Giga Texas just now, which is a new record. The bears will say, oh, that's $50 million sitting in inventory. See, all right, inventories that will definitely be sold. So that's $50 million of revenue sitting there. Tesla is basically allowing all FSD transfers. Again, FSD transfer is stackable with inventory adjustments and all other existing incentives trade in all the existing VIN with FSD is not required. Now, some are saying that this should be a permanent change until they see take rates go up meaningfully, in my opinion. And I think I basically agree with that, but I think also they can just keep extending it every quarter because uh, we might have a huge, massive FSD breakthrough. And once that happens, do you still want to allow that transfer? Probably not. I mean, customers would love it, but as an investor, these people, a lot of them, if they want a new car, they're going to buy a new car. James says that the timing is interesting because they have previously only offered this as a quarter end incentive. But I think looking at the delivery numbers and growth expectations this year, I think it makes sense to do this incentive right now. And it does look like everyone is asking this question, should FSD transfers become permanent? Right, just like hand and electric posed this question and electric is calling out Elon Musk for saying this was a one-time offer before but hey look things change Gregor truck presented a guide to getting free-ish FSD number one buy a lowball local deal of a vehicle with FSD buy a new sexy vehicle transfer FSD sale the vehicle in point one locally for about the same price number five you'll be left with free-ish FSD depending on how big sales taxes are in your local area. Oh, I didn't expect this from Omar. Tesla's pricing strategy slash business model for FSD seems a little confused. Now I can transfer again. Should we expect this to continue to happen or no? Should I buy? Should I subscribe? Enhance autopilot? What's that all about? It needs to be dead simple to go mass market. I mean, for me, it's simple, I just buy it, I love it. But when a decision is super confusing, people worry about making the wrong decision, so they decide to do nothing. A confused mind does nothing, indeed. When I was learning marketing and sales, that was one of the first lessons I learned. Oh, and even Sawyer says Tesla should just make free FSD transfers permanent at this point. Tesla basically confirmed that it is testing a new color in Texas, the Quicksilver one. Maybe that's one reason why Tesla increased its inventory. Maybe Tesla is going to shut down some of the factory lines to do some upgrades. I'm working on updating my Tesla valuation model currently, and I asked if Gary could post a screenshot of Wall Street delivery estimates from the Bloomberg terminal. Surprisingly, Gary Black is not changing his estimate for 2030. It's still over 10 million deliveries. Wall Street is at 5,300,000, which is 16.7% per year on average. And here's everything broken down by a model. The consensus is that that in 2030, Tesla will produce and deliver 275,000 Cybertrucks per year, but only 25,000 semis. I think this number for the semis is too low. I also really thought that Gary Black would cut his Tesla price target after the low deliveries of Q1, but he didn't. 
he reiterated his $250 price target. We now have pretty much all of the sales data from Europe. You can see that we are slightly behind last year, but last year we still had a pretty big delivery wave in Q2. So I expect Tesla to be above the previous year in April and probably May, but June will be interesting to watch. Belgium and Netherlands, these two countries are small countries in Europe, but look at their growth it's pretty huge despite japan being a massive auto market tesla's share over there remains very tiny uh, the bridge got damaged but the tesla driver walked out without a scratch this is crazy that's your tesla that's my tesla it landed on me it sheared off the front and i just went walked away were you just freaking out no i wasn't freaking out at all are you okay I'm 100% fine, so checked back up, over there. Back up. Was it, like it came from up there, I saw it coming down, it took off the front of my car, and I'm completely fine. Sounds like FSD in Europe is not happening for a long time. The way the updated regulation works is that the driver would need to approve of almost every significant maneuver or set of maneuvers. Practically, I'm not even sure how that might work or be designed, but it sounds like a massive pain distraction for the driver the opposite of the point of both the driver assistance and driver monitoring benefits of supervised fsd so it's like accepting rejecting cookies when you go to these european websites every three seconds but in this case oh your car is about to crash uh please click allow for me to dodge this threat oh sorry you already crashed too late gordon johnson just talked to adrian dittman who sounds a lot like elon musk but it's not elon musk this was quite fun to listen to with respect to your questions again i'll state the facts fsd take rates have imploded over the past three years guidehouse ranks fsd last as well as the three separate experts independently of each other i speak to and tesla is currently giving who are your experts hold on tesla is currently giving it away for free so those are three facts. I mean, you can take from that what you will. Yeah, the for free is basically just like an advertisement because there is a lot of misinformation online about how exact like, about FSD's functionality because everybody says, oh, you know, it's this, it's that, but there's hardly ever any facts. Uh, what I would like to know is who are your experts? Uh, I don't share that information. Why? Hey guys, I gotta run. Thanks a lot. Uh, I hope yeah. I wish you guys the best. Take care. When you know you have a losing argument, just run. In the meantime, this is Gregor try having a no interventions drive to Chipotle. And yesterday, I had FSD on during the drive from my clinic to home. It's a 15 minute drive. There are some awkward situations, but there were no interventions. When I say awkward, I mean the road is not exactly the easiest, but the vehicle handled everything very well. On V11, I would have had at least five interventions, sometimes more, depending on how much traffic there is. And when I say no interventions, I mean, I didn't even have to press the accelerator pedal. Nothing. The only thing that I wish it did slightly differently was not coming as close to the curb as it did. It was still very safe and comfortable. I was just paying extra attention thinking that, oh, maybe I would need to intervene, but I didn't. So if I knew that the vehicle was already as good as a robot taxi, I would not have even worried a slightest bit. But because I know the system is not perfect yet, I was like, hmm, that's a bit close. I'm working on updating my valuation model. And I was thinking, does Tesla make the best cars and EVs? Yes, of course it does. Is Tesla going after the mass market? Yes. Can Tesla deliver or produce the same value or performance at a lower price than anyone else? Yes. Therefore, is Tesla's volume eventually going to be Toyota's, which is about 10 million per year? Absolutely. So even without FSD solved, I believe Tesla will deliver more than 10 vehicles per year eventually. I think it's difficult to predict exactly how many vehicles will be delivered each year, but in the long term, I think this one is pretty easy to figure out. Here's another person sharing his FSD experience, and I agree with everything he says here. Tesla full cell driving definitely and questionably absolutely makes my car safer, he says. Even though I am supervising and paying close attention, FSD sees things I would never see and takes appropriate action. Don't get me wrong, I haven't had any situations where without it, I would have been in danger. Same here. But it did let a lady and her dog cross the road 
in a situation where I had not even seen her. And this one is also so true. I realized that with FSD and controller, I actually become more aware of my surroundings. I can look further to the sides and behind me while FSD steers. It is hard to describe how being the backup instead of the only line of defense makes me safer, but I can feel that. And I feel like I am training FSD just like I did with free kids on learner's permits. I think many people actually don't realize this, but FSD is going to be almost free to many people. This guy is experiencing $100 a month in savings because of FSD. His safety score improved from 93 to 98. So FSD does not cost him $200 a month. It only costs him basically a hundred. The CEO of Samsung just tried the Tesla Cybertruck. It was more comfortable than I thought, and the acceleration was amazing. The ability to detect your surroundings with 10 cameras was excellent. The short-term radius and large wiper were impressive. Tesla Cybertruck reservation holders in Canada could lose their spot in line. And the reason is, if you place your reservation on the US website and not the Canadian website, your reservation is going to be cancelled and then you will have to make a new reservation but now you will be at the very end of the line it's a bit unfair but also sort of fair check this out this is a tesla sabu truck in new york city towing a model y and the box says the best-selling car in the world is made in america stephen mark ryan just made a pretty serious prediction about Tesla stock, this obviously proves the stock is going lower because technical analysis makes sense and can predict the feature with 100% accuracy. As we can see, a classic micro PP pattern is forming. I mean, he's not wrong. Steven made another prediction. The charts tell me that Orange Man Bad will lead early in the counting, midway through the counting, and late into the counting until the late mail arrives and some pipes burst. With everything happening about Tesla right now, there's another silver lining here. Will Tesla set another record for regulatory credit sales this year? Yes, I think so, says James. Legacy realized it is cheaper and easier to pay Tesla than to build and sell EVs. Q1 is usually a very good quarter for these. I remain bullish on regulatory credits. James has been right about this for a long time, and I don't think he will be wrong about this. Elon said it's insanely hard in reply to Omar O. Oh, NVIDIA CEO says anybody can make their own neural network with NVIDIA chips. So simple. You're right. I guess Tesla has no moat. I mean, how hard can training one of these models to drive perfectly be? It's insanely hard, says Elon. And that's with the best team in the world. That's with the most data for full cell driving available for the company. That's with the CEO that has done the impossible repeatedly. Even for Elon Musk, it's insanely hard. So how hard do you think is going to be for other Teams. At Crunch reported that Tesla slash Model Y inventory prices by as much as $7,000, but Swear points out Tesla hasn't done anything new. These are exact same inventory discounts which have been around since last year. Nothing has recently changed. Tesla's inventory page now lets you select the preferred payment method when searching for the vehicle you want. Tesla also removed the ability to sort by pricing. It now defaults to show you pricing from low to high. Ooh, Fisco reportedly sheds more than 40,000 ocean orders as bankruptcy looms. BYD says it has developed a mid-sized to large all-electric pickup truck for the global market. Here's a teaser image that BYD released. Apple says it's laying off 600 employees after canceling the car project. Porsche is already working on the next generation Taycan with more range. I'm working on updating my Tesla stock evaluation currently. I'll publish the changes as soon as they are done. And in the meantime, YouTube says you should watch this video next. My name is Matt Posius. Like and subscribe if you haven't yet. And I will see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching.